Spurgeon here with RevZilla, and today we've got the detailed breakdown of the G-Max GM64 helmet available at RevZilla.com. So for those of you out there that are already familiar with G-Max's lineup, you're probably familiar with the 54S, which is their current modular helmet in their lineup. Now what we're seeing with the new GM64 is they've incorporated a dual pivot system, which allows you to open the front of the helmet, but it actually pulls it down nice and tight over the body. So for those of you that like to ride with your modular helmets in a three quarter position, you're gonna see that front face just sit a little bit tighter to the helmet than something like the 54S. Now when we're talking about the 64, this is gonna be DOT, it's a thermoplastic shell, two shell sizes are available, and when we're talking about the overall fitment for this, it is going to be a round helmet. So for those of you out there with a round noodle on top of your shoulders, this is definitely the one to consider. For those of you out there that need a little bit more of an intermediate oval fit, a little bit longer front to back, a little bit narrow on the sides, that's where the 54S comes into play because that one's probably gonna fit you a little bit better. And keep in mind, whenever you're deciding on a helmet, really it's gonna be the fit that's gonna win out first and foremost. The other helmet to consider when you're looking at this price range is gonna be something like the LS2 Metro helmet. What that's gonna give you, it's gonna give you a lighter design and it's also gonna give you something that has a little bit more of an aggressive look overall to it. When we threw this on the scale, again, there's two shell sizes with this. The medium came in at four pounds, four ounces. This is gonna be a pretty heavy helmet considering the competition that's out there. So breaking down the G-Max GM64, first and foremost, it's that full thermoplastic shell. You're gonna see six intake and six exhaust. So when you're looking at the front of this, you're gonna have two intakes at the chin. You're then gonna have chimney vents up top, and these will be completely active, so you can close them if you want to. And then as you move around to the back of the helmet, you're actually gonna have intake vents sitting right on the very top of the helmet as well. You can close those as well. So six active for the front, and then when we spin this around to the back, the six vents on the exhaust will all be passive exhaust. You will notice that under this mechanism right here, there will be two exhaust vents right there. Those are constantly open. And as you move down the back, you will have two more at the middle section and two more at the bottom. And when we rip apart the inside of this, you're gonna see that G-Max does a very good job of channeling their EPS to allow that airflow to push from the front out to the back. So let's get back around to the front for a second and let's talk about the actual face shield mechanism that you're gonna see here. So what you'll notice, it's the same face shield mechanism that we've seen on other G-Max helmets. And to get this off, it does require two hands. So actually, let me bring my donut up here for a second. So some of the other face shields that we've seen, you can get this off and on while still wearing the helmet. This is not gonna be the case with the G-Max. What you'll do is if we open the face shield all the way, you'll see a little button right here. And what you need to do is with one hand, you're gonna push that little button in and then you're gonna slide this arm down. Once you slide that arm down, the face shield pops right off for ease of removal, but you do need to use two hands to get it back on. And then once it's back in there, you just simply push it into place and slide that arm back up. So it's not a complicated process. It just requires two hands to actuate that. So when we're talking about the fact that this is a modular helmet, when we open this up, you have your lever in the front, the push the button down, and that's gonna allow you to open up the, face or the, the front of the, the helmet with this. One of the things that we've noticed is that to close this, it has a tendency to catch. And there is gonna be a gasket in here. And let me see if I can just show it to you. If I open this up and we spin it around to this side, you're gonna see the gasket for the top of the actual front of that face shield when it opens up in the modular design tends to rub right here. Now, all I'm noticing right now is that it just sticks a little bit and you have to give a little bit more of a hard pull. I'm not sure if this is gonna wear out over time. We haven't used this helmet long enough, but it is definitely something to consider that there's definitely a little bit more pull here than what we're seeing with something like the GM54S. And a lot of that has to do with that new dual pivot design. So it does a nice job of coming up, sitting really nice and flush against the helmet, but you do get a little bit more rub right there. The other thing you're gonna notice is that they've changed where you're gonna actuate that internal sun visor. So this is gonna have the internal sun visor built in, but they've put this in a place where it really inhibits you from using any comm system setup other than something that would be a sticky mount. And even if you can use a sticky mount, something like, uh, like the Cena 10R, you would have to put it all the way on the back of the helmet or somewhere up top because it's not even enough room to fit it right down here. So I could see this being a real problem for touring riders that want to incorporate a comm system into the helmet. The location could be redesigned to give you, you know, better thought out process for installing a comm system with this particular helmet. 
So we've talked about the vents on this. So what I want to do now is I want to get to the inside of the helmet. And keep in mind, there's two shell sizes for this, one EPS liner, and the shell size breakdown is going to come from extra small up to large. And then you get into the second shell size when you get up into the XL to the 3XL helmet with this. So just taking a look at the liner on this, this is going to be a cool max liner, sweat wicking, and you will have pockets, not cut out from the inside of the helmet, but you will have pockets in the actual um, cheek pads themselves where you can install speakers there if you want to install the comm system. So they did think out you comm users as far as that's concerned. And there will be a slight contour to the cheek pad in the GM64. And this is something that we're not seeing with the 54S. So cool max liner helps to wick sweat away. And there will be a little bit more of that contoured shape to the cheek pad itself. So let's get the rest of the cheek pads out. And then what I do want to show you is as we pull the cheek pads out, we pull the liner out. I want to show those contours that they've done a really nice job of cutting away for the venting system with this. But before we get into that, just take one final look here at the liner. One of the things that G-Max does that I really like is they don't use snaps on the brow to, uh, to install their liners. Instead, they use a uh, brow mounting system that mounts up into the top part of the helmet. So you don't have to worry about snaps pushing against your forehead. So nice thought out liner to that. Nothing overly complex, nothing crazy, but it is a thought out system compared to some of the other liners we've seen. And then as we open this up, just take a look at the massive amount of channeling that they do include in their EPS liner. So again, it's more of a, of a price point helmet when we're talking about that $180 price point for modular. It does weigh in a little bit on the heavier side, but one of the things that G-Max does, they do give you nice channel vents in the EPS to make sure the airflow is pushing through. And you can see those channel through from the front to the back to make sure that that air pushes all the way down to the back of your head. And like I said, it is gonna be that single density EPS liner. Now the final note here, and this is just a little positive note for G-Max, is they have included metal pins for this. So when you do have the modular system locked into place, they didn't go with plastic pins like we've seen from some other manufacturers, but they've gone with a more of a metal design, and this helps for just more of a secure fit. So I was actually, I was actually quite pleased to see that they went with the metal pins for the actuator for the modular system. Now, for those of you out there that are looking for a modular helmet around that $180 price point, G-Max has you covered with the GM64. And really the takeaway feature here is the fact that it does have that dual pivot design, which gives you a nice sleeker line if you are rocking this in that three quarter position. Now there's a lot of riders out there that are utilizing the GM64 and other G-Max helmets on their rides. And if you wanna hear more about what they have to say, click the info button on your desktop or mobile device, which will allow you to read other rider reviews from folks that are already out there using these helmets on their motorcycles. If you have more questions for us, reach out to one of our gear geeks by phone at 877-792-9455 or simply shoot us an email, csirvzilla.com. Thank you for joining us for this look at the G-Max GM64 helmet. I'm Spurge, enjoy the ride.